A quick new idea, daily, from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. Karen Howe is the Artificial Intelligence Senior Reporter for the MIT Technology Review. And she wants to challenge the notion that we only need technical expertise when we develop technology. Howe believes that as algorithms are moving at unprecedented speeds, completely rewiring our society, we need social expertise too. Because only when we design AI more responsibly will technology help us rather than hurt us. I am the senior artificial intelligence reporter at MIT Technology Review. I've interviewed hundreds of experts and written close to 200 articles, and what I've realized is the way we develop AI is fundamentally broken. All technologies have good and bad effects, even when that's never the intention. Think of cars. Cars were invented to move us around. But when they first grew popular, they also increased the death rate of roadway accidents. Now, historically, we've had a mechanism for dealing with this a process for making technology more good and less bad. It looks like a feedback loop between two sides. First, tech people invent something, the invention is deployed, and it has some impact on society. Then social experts evaluate that impact, and they raise concerns. And this leads to a debate which goes on until some fix is proposed. Regulators then turn that proposal into regulation, and tech people modify their technology to make it better. This is exactly what happens with cars. Cars were invented, people started driving them, and then some of them died from car crashes. But after a fierce debate about why these deaths occurred, regulators finally introduced seatbelt regulation. Cars became more good and less bad. But for artificial intelligence, this cycle is broken. The speeds and scales at which we invent and deploy algorithms now completely overwhelms the second part of this process. In the time it takes us to debate and implement regulation, too many people have already been harmed. You can see how this played out for deep fakes. Deep fakes are now a huge problem. They risk undermining our trust in media and destabilizing political elections. We now have no idea how to fix this problem. Should we ban deepfakes? Should we punish its abuse? Unlike cars, deepfake production isn't centralized. And while we're trying to figure out this problem, the number of deepfakes are growing by the day. The way we develop AI is fundamentally broken, and deepfakes aren't the only example. Facebook invented an algorithm to target users with ads. It uses what you like to predict what ads you might click. And it was quickly rolled out to the entire platform. Well, last year, a group of economists found something disturbing. It turns out this algorithm likely perpetuates employment discrimination. It shows nurse and secretary jobs more often to women than men, and janitor and taxi jobs more often to minorities than white people. Social experts took five years to discover these revelations, and we're now spending more time trying to fix this problem. Now imagine being a marginalized person in your own country. The sexism and racism you face day to day is being codified and systematized online. Face recognition is everywhere. Governments around the world, including in the US, UK, China, and India, are installing these systems in public spaces. They're supposed to help us catch terrorists and criminals, but they're also being used to track migrants, minorities, and protesters. This could be the biggest debate of AI today. Should we ban face recognition from public entirely or just in specific places? Is it possible to modify this technology to make it better? or should it just not exist? Face recognition is spreading so fast that regulators don't even have time to consider all these options. 
In the European Union, regulators are considering a public ban on face recognition for five years, just to buy themselves more time. Think about that. If we have to temporarily ban a technology to fix it, we must be doing something wrong. So what do we do? How do we fix this process? Well, we shouldn't start the debate after a technology is deployed. We should be starting it before. And we shouldn't wait to observe the impacts. We should be anticipating them. And that means tech and social experts shouldn't be on opposite sides. They should be together at the very beginning. Because we live in a world where tech problems are social problems, and social problems are tech problems. And yet we've been building algorithms that choose where we live, where we work, whether we are criminals, what we believe, fundamental questions to the fabric of our society without even considering society itself. So we need to break down this divide between technical and social experts. Tech companies and tech teams need to hire both. Social experts are the ones who understand how historical technologies have impacted society. And that will help us better predict how emerging technologies will too. But the pace of technology will only get faster. We need to get ahead of this. We need more than interdisciplinary teams. Ultimately, we also need interdisciplinary people. There should be no more tech people and no more social people. In the age of AI, our education needs to teach future tech builders to be both. We are in the midst of unprecedented change. And the way we develop technology is now fundamentally broken. But I truly believe that we can fix it. We need to. So we do not continue totally unprepared. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event in Mumbai, India. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx Gateway. Want to listen to more TEDx talks? Explore the entire archive on the TEDx YouTube channel. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening and see you tomorrow.